We want to make sure we're going to cover everybody, not what caused the problem last time, but what could cause it next Senator time. Senator Sanders, Secretary Clinton just said that her policy is tougher than yours. They won't talk about the Federal Reserve, you notice. Uh, they won't talk about that. Why? Let us be clear that the greed and recklessness and illegal behavior of Wall Street, where fraud is a business model, helped to destroy this economy and the lives of millions of people. It also helped to make Clinton mm -hmm. really, really rich. Yes. All due respect. Talk to her about cattle futures. You want to talk about Wall Street and investment bankers? Talk to her about Wall cattle Street futures. Spending billions of dollars in lobbying. When the Congress that exempt themselves from when Alan Greenspan said, what yeah. a great any tip off. That's right. Congress can in involve in insider Senators trading. Hillary Clinton can make a fortune in a single trade because they manipulate that trade in cattle futures and nothing happens to her. That's what's wrong with capitalism. It's not capitalism, it's corruption. That's what it is. It's not casino capitalism. It's not even, it's crony, it's crony capitalism. Secretary Clinton, you have to be able to respond. You know, I, I respect the passion and intensity. I represented Wall Street as a senator from New York and I went to Wall Street in December of 2007, before the big crash that we had, and I basically said, cut it out. Quit foreclosing on homes. If you don't Quit stop oh. doing that, I'm not going to take money from you, leaders. Goldman Sachs. Cut it out, guys. I'm going to refuse to take thing. that money if you don't yeah. stop this. I have thought deeply and long about what wow. I'm going to oh, do. Wow. Look at CNN exactly money. Exactly what I think both yeah. the senator and the governor want. Which That's is bad, to okay? Now. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. And my you guys just stop it now, eh? have the potential <laughs> of actually sending the executives to jail. <laughs> Nobody went really? to jail mm -hmm. after $100 billion. You want to talk about someone going to jail, woman? And I know. Nobody went to jail in the Obama administration that you're a part of, even when they were laundering money for drug cartels. They gave them their own private window at the Sinaloa cartel, El Chapo. They gave him his own private window. Nobody went to jail. Go ahead, Kit. You got something? Yeah, I got a really sarcastic tweet from uh, Barney about white privilege. And he writes, yeah, because I was born white. I was born with a million dollars in a silver spoon with legal immunity. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Democrats are always pushing this whole race war rhetoric, even though Democrats are actually historically tied to the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. But, you know, the real conflict is between the state and the individual. I mean, the individual is the smallest minority, and the individual is the one that's always constantly being oppressed by the state. But the Democrats, as long as other authoritarians, they're always going to push this whole race war rhetoric to try to reflect that fact. So people don't realize that the true oppressor is the state. Absolutely. As we pointed out earlier, everything that they come up with is about removing our choice, unless it's about your choice to kill your child. But when they talk about health care, they want the single payer to make the single decision. They're now 65 percent of our GDP. And uh, <coughs> right before this debate, Secretary Clinton's campaign put out a lot of reversals on positions on Keystone and many other things. But one of them that we still have a great difference on, Madam Secretary, is that you are not for Glass-Steagall. You are not for putting a firewall between this speculative, risky shadow banking behavior. I am. And the people of our country need a president who's on their side, willing to protect the Main Street economy from recklessness on Wall Street. Now, are you ready to arm wrestle me or what? I love how she just is so flippant, like, oh, I know I flip flop on everything, but. Here's an article from CNN Wall Street has made Hillary Clinton a millionaire. Oh, now oh, yeah. she's like, everyone's Many guilty of flip flopping. Let me point out how bad everyone else is. You're going to change your position. Deflect. I never took a position on Keystone until I took a position on Keystone. But I have been on the <laughs> forefront of dealing with she climate change. Position. What does that mean? I don't know. That's kind of like uh, they call me Jeb and I earn that. <laughs> Not a transaction. Exactly. You know, here's the, here's the situation with Keystone, folks. Obama, in the Obama administration, the only people supporting Keystone was Hillary Clinton and her State Department. They were supporting the Keystone Pipeline. And what the Keystone Pipeline is doing is it's a prime example of multinational vulture capitalism. You've got uh, TransCanada using eminent domain to take the farms of people who have had that in their family for over 100 years. We get let a foreign multinational corporation seize uh, property using the government, eminent domain. So we got both front runners in the Republican and the Democrat uh, primaries here, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, supporting eminent domain for big business, even foreign big business, because 
big corporations have better property rights than you do. If you're little, you don't really have the same property rights as a big corporation because of government. That's the problem. And that's why all this stuff about socialism is so phony, because it just enables that kind of theft by the government. To bail out Wall Street. And by the way, I want Wall Street now to help kids in this country go to college, public colleges and universities free. There you go. There you go. There's socialism for you. Minute, but Senator Webb, I want to get you. And you have said <laughs> neither party you has the guts to take on Wall Street. Is the system rigged? Who? There is a reality that I think we all need to recognize with <laughs> respect to the power of the financial sector. And let me just go back a minute and say that on, on this TARP program, um, I introduced a piece of legislation calling for a windfall profits tax on the executives of any of these companies that got more than five billion dollars that it was time for them. Wait a minute. Why they should they get the money in the first place? Don't give them the money and then give them a windfall profits tax and you're only going to be taking a percentage of the money. They shouldn't have been given the money in the first place. That was an incredible theft. It was a bank robbery. But they won't talk about the Federal Reserve. They all want to hold up Wall Street Journal, uh, the Wall Street Journal, Wall Street as this pinata that they beat, mm -hmm. but they won't talk about the Federal Reserve. Bernie Sanders says get money out of politics, get the Federal Reserve out of money. That's what they need to do. Set a mark here so maybe we can get into a little more later on. This isn't been equal, equal time. Um, but if you want to look at what's happened, if we look at the facts in terms of how we're going to deal with this, since that crash, in the last 10 years, the amount of the world's capital economy that Wall Street manages has gone from 44% to 55%. That means the Wall Street money managers are not risking themselves as the same way the American people are when they're going to get their compensation. They're managing money from all over the world. Thank you. We have to take that into consideration when we're looking at uh, ways to regulate it. Governor Chafee, you've attacked Secretary Clinton for being too close to Wall Street banks. In 1999, you voted for the very bill that made banks bigger. <laughs> uh, the glass seagull was my very first vote. I just arrived. My dad had died in office. I was appointed to the office. It was my are very you saying, first vote. Are you saying my you didn't dad know what died. you were voting for? <laughs> I just arrived the Senate. Oh, you didn't know what you were voting for? I didn't for? know what I was doing. None man. of them <laughs> read the <laughs> bills. They yeah. have to pass them to find out what's in it. Well, look, I was drunk at the time I voted for that bill. Yeah. You know? My dad had just I mean, died, and I didn't know what I was doing. There's a cockroach on the ground. There's a cockroach on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I've been mayor of my city. All right, we're good. We got it. Appointed by the governor. Our choices. The and there's the cockroach. 90 to 5. It's still there. It's still alive. <laughs> but let me just say about income inequality. We've had a lot of talk over the last few minutes, hours, or tens of minutes, but no one's saying how we're going to fix it. And it all starts with the tax cuts that favor the wealthy. <laughs> That's not a hard choice. Tax code. And 0.6% of Americans are at the top echelon That's of over 464,000. That's awesome. Americans. That's that was pretty sexist. Well, but they generate I gotta say that Lincoln Chaffee is one of the weakest presidential candidates I've ever seen in my life. Still a lot more this money to be had from really this pathetic. I know, he, I, he had less than 1%. I guess they just had to back into the tax bracket and that'll generate make it a little bit more exciting. Uh, the I don't know. Earning America. I think it's to make Hillary look Stephen good. <laughs> They're all just like, <laughs> and like how did he ever get elected to anything? I don't know. Hey, Sanders, speaking of making Hillary times, look good, you did you know CBS just launched a new television series called Madam Secretary? Oh. And it's based on the life of Hillary Clinton. There you wow. go. There you go. Last week, Madeleine Albright was, she had a guest appearance on the show. Ah. And they reenacted a Benghazi-like scenario where the Madam Secretary behaved like a true hero. Well, they did just well, maybe repeal they could the have. Smith Month Act so they can propagate to the American people. Yeah. So yeah, I was surprised. Propaganda. Yeah, I was surprised CNN didn't do like a color correction on Hillary to make her look uh, darker. You know, uh, uh, Darren, what they might have done is they might have uh, reenacted with uh, Madeleine Albright that thing where she said it was worth starving half a million children. Well, that's what they should have done. Yeah, right. Yeah, but they're not going to do that. And, of course, you're talking about CBS. NBC uh, had her on Saturday Night Live, and then mm -hmm. they did these uh, fluff things with her on the following Monday, asking her what her favorite book and her favorite drink were. They had her on Saturday Night Live uh, singing uh, with a bartender trying to humanize her because yeah. everybody knows that she's a flip-flopping robot who's totally corrupt. <laughs> and and there's no doubt she wants you to live in the land of make-believe. I mean, yeah. and she was just talking about Vladimir Putin. She compared him to the fictional character that was on House of Cards, the mm -hmm. Russian president. She says that's mm -hmm. what he's really like. Yeah. 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 And she's really like the the wife 
of, so I can't remember, but the lady that'll do anything to get power. The Stepford right. wife. Yes. <laughs> A true robot. Fine. <laughs> I look past all God your God affairs idea. and indiscretions. It's all yeah. about power. That's right. Don't vote for Monica's boyfriend's wife. <laughs> have student debt will be able to refinance their debt to a low interest rate that will save thousands of dollars for people who are now struggling under this cumbersome burdensome uh, college debt let's just understand that everything that the government has done to try to help people with college has done nothing but raise the cost of tuition it's just like we see with insurance uh, we recently had a, a situation where a member of the family had to go get some tests and it was interesting that the amount that we paid as a cash patient, because that's the kind of insurance that we have with one of the uh, MediShare uh, uh, organizations, the amount that we paid as a cash uh, patient was what our deductible would have been. They would have charged us, I think it was six times what that amount was if we'd had insurance, and then our deductible would have essentially been what we paid as cash patients. We've seen that with the LA Times, and that's precisely what's happening with the college education. College tuition has exploded since I was in college. I didn't need to have the federal government for me to go to college. It was affordable at the time. Mm -hmm. But now because of the federal government aid, they've made it unaffordable because it's been a gravy train for the universities. They have absolutely no reason to control costs. They have every reason to raise the cost of tuition, just like the insurance companies have every reason to raise the price of insurance. David, when we went in to have our daughter we paid right up front, <clears throat> put it on a credit card, and it was a little over five grand. Mm -hmm. If we had made payments, it was $15,000. Mm -hmm. And if we had gone through insurance, $25,000. Exactly. That's what we saw as well. Yeah. And so and, that's the scam, Rob. That's well, the and, scam. And it made us about. watch what was going on. We didn't let just people walk into the room and say, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Wait, are, are you included in what we just paid? And they're like, no, we're a special contract. Yeah. See you later. Yeah, right. exactly, exactly. They have better they just control come in, over they, what's happening. They pick up the chart, they look at it, sign their name, and then send you a bill. They can look right. at your kid and say, you didn't build that, we did that. Yeah. <laughs> You're in debt forever, trying to pay your kid off. This is a so-called chain CPI. I founded a caucus called the Defending Social Security Caucus. My view is that when you have millions of seniors in this country trying to get by, and I don't know how they do, on eleven, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 a year, you don't cut Social Security, you expand it. And the way you expand it is by lifting the cap on taxable incomes so that you do away with the absurdity of a millionaire paying the same I need your money, as folks. As yeah. Give Social it to Security me. has always been a lie. That, it was done first Security by the Germans. Bismarck did it. He picked the age of 65 and because that was a life expectancy. They never expected to pay anybody anything. It's always been a lie to say they're there for you. And that's precisely what it is. It's still a lie. Immigrants of any state in the country as of last year. Well, and then they're going to privatize it and let Wall Street play with Social Security, yeah. which is even worse. And then they'll go, oh, we lost the money. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. If they privatize it, you're right, Rob. If they privatize it, they're going to require that we can only put our retirement savings into Wall Street. We can't use it to buy land, for example, or hard assets of any sort. It'll have to be paper investments in Or a business yeah. that you could work later. Exactly, or a business. No, they're not going to let you do that, no. Yes, work or provisions in it which the Southern Poverty Law Center talked about being semi-slavery. Guest workers are coming in, they're working under terrible conditions, but if they stand up for their rights, they're thrown out of the country. I was <laughs> not the only progressive to vote against that legislation for that reason. Tom Hawken, a very good friend of Hillary Clinton's and mine, one of the leading labor advocates also voted against that. This is a total dog and pony show. I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Let's just make Hillary look good over and over. Right now, and always yeah. has been, yeah. is that when you have 11 million undocumented people in this country, we need comprehensive immigration reform. We need a path toward citizenship. We need to take people out of the shadows. Why do we need to give citizenship to people who come here illegally? I don't understand that obligation. See, that's that's the problem solution that they always put that's out there. That's because you're a racist, David. Yeah. Well, that's why you don't understand. Think about the uh, migrants that are suing Germany now because they didn't receive their welfare check fast enough. It took them longer than a week to give them their welfare check, so they're suing them. Yeah, no entitlement. She wants to make sure that all child, all children get health care. First, you have to be able to survive birth. For 
yeah. immigrants to be able <laughs> right. to buy in to the baby steps. It's baby steps.